آزادی بیان یعنی لون زیو فری سپیچ سو دن هیرز دی کوشن هاو دو وی انگیج این دیت کانورسیشن این اندیا ویچ آی سرتنی ترید تو دو مای سلف وی هاف دیس اکسفورد یونیورسیتی ویب سایت فری سپیچ دی دیت دوت کوم ویچ ایز این 30 لنگویجز انکلودینگ هندی Um, no, it's great because also what you're doing there is a thing that really needs to be done, which is to you have these sort of principles of free speech. Yes. It's sort of what is it, eight or ten, ten, ten principles that we need to accept are the foundation without which it doesn't exist. And um, well, that would be a starting point. Yes. You know. So then here's the question: How do we engage in that conversation in in, in India, which I've certainly tried to do myself? We have this. Oxford University website, freespeechdebate.com, yeah. which is in 30 languages, including Hindi. Um, no, it's great, because also what you're doing there is a thing that really needs to be done, which is to, you have these sort of principles of free speech. Yes. It's sort of, what is it, eight or ten, ten. ten principles that we need to accept are the foundation without which it doesn't exist. And, well, that would be a starting point, yes. you know. But the problem is that in India, because all sides of the political spectrum have been essentially playing the religious communalist card for exactly. so long, exactly. for so long. And this is, you know, even-handed. I, the Congress is just as guilty as the BJP. Because of that, there is an attitude amongst the public at large, which is that religious sentiment trumps any form of free expression. And that if you can just say, all you have to do in India is to say that your sentiments are offended. And the person who's offended your sentiments is guilty because you say so. Exactly. You know, there is no defense. And I mean, that was the problem with the Wendy Doniger book, that there's one cranky extremist, a man called Dinanath Bhatra, yeah. who brought this action against that book, a, a, an action which, if you read the text of the action, is functionally illiterate. Um, it says that she's a woman hungry of sex. <laughs> because she dares to suggest that the Shivlingam in a, in a Shiva temple is a representation of the male phallic organ, which, goodness me, yes it is. <laughs> um, unless you're Mr. Bhatra, in which case it shows that she's hungry of sex. Um, this, this appalling sort of idiot managed to get the book banned because the law says that if he says that he's outraged and offended, then the book is outrageous and offensive, yeah. because he says so. So one of our 10 draft principles um, on, on the site is we respect the believer, mm. but not necessarily the content of the belief. Yeah, um, absolutely. Something on which, by the way, the professor of theology at Oxford and Richard Dawkins both agree, which is an achievement. <laughs> that's, so, that's an achievement. However, when I presented this to a group of Indian MPs, Yes, they didn't agree. They all leapt up and started throwing things at me. I mean, absolutely, yeah. totally impossible yeah, to exactly. in India. And the same thing is true with this, this, with, with this concept that I think is very problematic, which has got, got a lot of traction now, which is Islamophobia. Right. You know, now, again, we can say that we know that in Western Europe, certainly, there have been neo-Nazi attacks on Muslim people. And on those limbs and people yeah, identified Muslim, yeah, as Muslims. Yeah, yeah, yes. that there have been racist attacks on yes. individuals. And, and that is considered to be Islamophobia. Yeah. But so is any criticism of the beliefs of Islam. Yeah. And it seems to me that that's exactly where your point is valuable, because what it says is, of course we have to separate individuals from what they think. And individuals being attacked is a bad thing, but you can't ring fence their ideas. Yeah. You know, if you think the world is flat, yes. it should be my right to ridicule you. Yes, you're right. You know, and to say you're full of crap. Yes. You know? Now, if I happen to be, let's assume, metamorphosing, that I happen to be Christopher Hitchens. <laughs> <laughs> and I think, as Christopher said in the subtitle of his book, that religious, religion was it ruins everything, um, I should be able to say so. If you're a person of deep religious belief, it should be possible to say, I think all your deep religious beliefs are crap. You know, because that is not, they're not true for a start. Yes, 
But I respect you as a person, but yes, but as you know, a human being. Yes, let's have the conversation, yes. and you know, you might even be a nice person, and maybe we support the same football team. Yes, but you're full of shit. Yes. <laughs> you have to be able to say that. Yes, um, and for that to be called a, a hate crime, yeah. is an enormous infringement of free speech. Yes.